According to Forbes, leads are waiting 47 hours on average to hear anything back from a business after contacting them. This enables two days for competitors to snatch the lead and convert that sale. In such a competitive online market, consumers can within seconds go to another business's website and contact them instead. This impatience from consumers is creating a race between businesses to contact leads as quickly as possible. The faster you respond, the more likely they will become a customer. So what's the solution? AI phone callers are realistic sounding, intelligent and quick salespeople who can be deployed immediately. Within seconds of submitting a contact form, we can send a call to our lead asking certain qualifying questions and book appointments quicker than all of our competitors. Here's a quick demo of how it sounds. Hey John, thanks for contacting us. We saw you were interested in buying an iPhone 15. Is that right? In this video, I'll break down two inbound AI phone caller systems. The first will be an inbound form submission caller. This is where leads will submit their details into a contact form and we will deploy an AI caller five minutes later to qualify them and then book them into an appointment. The second system will be an inbound diversion caller where we will forward a call to a specific department to go ahead and handle the inquiry. For example, this could be a sales department or a technical department. Currently, diversion callers are static audio files that say dial one for X or dial two for Y. This is a useful system that enables the business to only have one phone number for all their inquiries, which makes it a bit easier for all their customers to get in contact with them. But we are gonna go ahead and take this to the next level with a more natural conversation that can understand complex queries and accurately qualify which department they actually require and then transfer them to the right department live during the call. This will completely solve inquiries that go to the wrong departments and will save time for the business as well as make the calling experience much better for customers. These are undeniably valuable services to sell to businesses and use within your own business, increasing the amount of booked appointments from contact submissions and increasing customer satisfaction by forwarding the calls to the right departments. By investing your time into this video, you will be equipped with the knowledge to build these systems and everything else in the AI caller space. The two platforms that I will use to build this is Vappy and Make.com. Vappy is what I will use for the AI voice caller. I've tested several voice caller platforms here on the channel and I've found Vappy to be a great all round solution, providing quick responses, allowing for live data in the conversation and being really cost efficient. I will use Make.com to run the calling automation where we can automatically detect a form submission from our website provider and send a call to the lead's phone number. But we use Make again to capture and store data during the call as well and book the appointment. The best part about this is that it requires no code whatsoever and is super simple to follow along with. So to get started, I'm gonna work on the inbound diversion system. So once again, the purpose of this assistant is to divert the caller to the right department. So if I had a particular problem with a product that I had just bought and I called up this number and said that the product was broken, it might divert me to the technical team to go ahead and fix the product. But if I went ahead and called them and asked that I would like to purchase one of their products, it may go ahead and divert me to the sales department. So to give you an even better idea, I'm just gonna show you the demo of the system working. Hi, thank you for calling Apple. Please let me know what you are looking for and I will forward this call to the corresponding department. Hey, I'm looking to buy the iPad 5. Great, we'd be more than happy to assist you with your purchase. John. Thank you, John. I am now forwarding your call to our sales team will assist you further with purchasing the iPad 5. Hi, is this John? Yeah, this is John. Hi, John. It looks like you were interested in an iPad 5. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So as you can see there, we were able to call up this assistant, give it our particular problem. It identified that we were looking for a sales department and then it went ahead and called us from the sales department. We can pick up and then start talking with the sales guys. So in this case, I'm forwarding the calls to another AI. So we have a sort of multi AI agent system going on, but obviously you can also just forward the call to an actual number if you don't want that sort of a secondary AI step. But jumping right into it, I'm just gonna briefly go over Vappy, which Vappy is the AI caller platform that allows us to build most of this system. So right here on Vappy, we have a set of instructions that teaches the AI on how to respond. Then we've got a voice tab, which I've got selected at 11 labs. So if you're familiar with any of the AI voice stuff, 11 labs is one of the most advanced platforms that allows us to create really realistic sounding voices. But obviously you can choose whichever platform you'd like, but I've gone ahead and selected 11 labs and added a custom voice. And next to this, we have functions and functions are what are going to allow us to make these transferring calls. 
I'll come back to these functions in just a minute. And now I'm just gonna to explain to you how I've engineered the prompt for this particular assistant. So here on Vapi, we get two sort of boxes in our sort of instruction settings. One is a first message. And the first message is simply the first thing that the assistant says when you call it. So in this case, I've said, hi, thank you for calling Apple. Please let me know what you're looking for and I'll forward this call to the corresponding department. So for this particular example, I've just chosen Apple, but obviously you can choose whatever you'd like or integrate it into your own business. Then below this first message, we have a system prompt and a system prompt is more of the heavy instructions that actually teaches the assistant how to respond, how to act and really let it know who it is. So the first thing in my system prompt, I'm stating the role and the role is who the assistant is. So who they are. And in this case, I've said you are an experienced help desk assistant for the technology company, Apple. Your role is to divert calls to the relevant departments depending on the customer's query. So by just going ahead and stating directly to the assistant who they are and exactly what their role is, it's gonna now understand how to tackle all the questions that come its way. Scrolling down a bit more, I have a specific task. So the task is what they actually have to do. So what does the assistant actually have to do to achieve their role, which is ultimately diverting calls to the relevant departments. And in this case, the task is to converse with the customer need to find out which of these departments best suits their needs. And in this case, I've said a technical department, sales department, or disputes department. If you are looking for a custom system just like this, you can go ahead and book a call with my team using the calendar link in the description. We've helped several businesses integrate the solutions that you've seen here on the channel, and we'd be more than happy to help you out. And then I have specifics. So this is actually how they do it. So how do they actually achieve this task that we've set out? And this is just saying, you are a highly intelligent classifier. You'll be able to tell if a particular customer needs the technical team for product support, the sales team to purchase a product, or the dispute team to return the item, receive a refund, etc. You must closely follow the scripts provided for each department. And these specifics are very important to my career. Please follow these. Your ability to accurately classify the right department deeply helps the business make a profit. So you're probably wondering why I added this in here. And the only reason I've added this in here is to do with something called emotional prompting. And emotional prompting really just helps emphasize the importance of this part of the prompt by saying that it's very important to my career and that it's critical for the business's profit. The prompting and the agent will just look at this and give it a bit of a higher ranking in terms of its importance and then really try to focus in on and really work with what you've said. Now, just beneath this, I've got context and context is actually just giving the AI a bit more context as to who they actually are. And so in this case, I've given context to the business and what we actually do. Now you'll notice that I've got this sort of hashtag here and this double hashtag here as well. And the reason I've done this is this is called markdown formatting. And markdown formatting is really just communicating to the AI different sections and importance levels during the prompt. And so this is something that OpenAI themselves actually trained their models on. So this is just a really good thing to get into. Where we're adding in these subsections, which really just communicates to the AI what is part of what and really just helps give it even more context as to the prompt we've given it. So in this case, we've got context, which is the main heading. And then we've got the business, which is the sort of subheading. And within this, we've got, we are Apple Inc. And we provide technology products to the world. For example, the iPhone and iPad. Now, obviously for your actual business, you might need to provide a little bit more detail, but in this case, I'm sort of just betting on the fact that it knows what Apple is through its basic training data. Then below this, we've got what we do. And so this is once again, double hashtagged. And we're just saying, we help people connect digitally with world-class devices. I've just made that up, but obviously you can add whatever you want uh, for your particular business. And this is really just gonna help it get an understanding of who they are, what their purpose is and why they're doing what they're doing and really emphasizing the importance on what they're doing as well. Then below this, we have one of the most important parts of the actual prompt, which is examples. And so we need to provide examples to the bot so it actually understands what it needs to do. And it doesn't just ramble on some random thing that isn't relevant to what we're trying to do. So once again, I've got our main heading of examples and I've got the subheading that says sales department script. And so I've got several different scripts for each of the different versions or variants of conversations that could occur. So in this case, I've got a sales department script. Below this, I've got a sales department script version two. So if something different happens, I've just gone ahead and given it some sort of a sort of instructions and a pathway to take uh, if something else happens. Below this, I've got a technical department script as well as a dispute department script as well. So the way that I've structured the sales department script, I've just said you, and so you is the assistant because we're talking to the assistant here. I was saying, you should say, hi, thank you for calling Apple. Uh, so this is really just the first message. So we're just emphasizing uh, the first message that it just said, so it stays on track. And then we're saying, if the customer says, hi, I'm interested in purchasing an iPhone 15, we should then say, great, we'd be more than happy to assist you in this. Can I please have your name? And then I will forward this call to our sales team. So for this particular assistant, I'm looking for two different values. I'm looking for the product that they're interested in purchasing, so the iPhone 15, and I'm also looking for their name. And so you'll notice just below this, I've got a function call. And the function call, it says, once the customer name and product name is collected, run the sales function. So now I'm gonna go back to functions 
functions, if I just click on functions, and then we've got our sales function. When something specific occurs during the conversation, we can have a particular action run. And in this case, I've gone ahead and said, when the call needs to be forwarded to the sales team, run the sales function. So the prompt we gave it will understand this and during the call automatically start to run this function uh, because it's now met that criteria. Now below this, we have two different properties. One is name and one is product. And so like we said, during that prompt, we've got the name. So that's the name of the customer. We've also got the name of the product. So once it's got these required values, it's gonna go ahead and send a request to make.com. So this right here is make.com. Make.com is an automations platform that allows us to communicate information from one platform to the other. And so in this case, we're able to take Vapi and send a request to a sort of URL. This URL is then able to send a bit of information over to a request block. And then this request block can then send some more information off to Vapi, which is another phone call, which is going to call our customer or our person on the phone and that is gonna be the sales department now talking to them. So very simply, all I've done is created a new make scenario. I've added in this webhook block and this webhook block has given me a URL. I've gone ahead and copied this URL, added it to our server URL function. And then all this does is it then runs off to a HTTP request. And so this request block simply makes a phone call from your VAPI account and goes ahead and just calls the number uh, that came through on the webhook. And so if I just scroll down a bit in this request block, we've got a bit of JSON here, which just is structuring the exact assistant that we're gonna be calling with. So this JSON here, you can get from the VAPI documentation, which I will have linked in the description, but I'm also gonna have this template within my free resource hub linked in the description. My resource hub also has 20 other chatbot and automation templates, which you can use and play around with for completely free. So very similar to what we had just before, we've got the role and we've got who they are, and we've got the specifics, and it's really just the exact same script. And then we've also gone ahead and added in uh, some dynamic variables that came in from the webhook. So what we're able to do is by making this call via a request, we're able to input their name as well as the product that they were interested in and actually communicate this back to them. So if in the first call they said that their name was Brendan and they were interested in the iPhone 15, that call that gets then sent to them is gonna say, hey, are you Brendan and are you interested in the iPhone 15? So all we need to do is then send a request to make.com to get these variables populated in make. And then we can simply find these variables in here and you can see here parameters, name and product. So this has come directly from VAPI in those parameters and it just says name. So we just click on name. In this case, an example that I sent through was named John. So we can just put hi and then in the actual call, it will say, hi, John, are you interested in the iPhone 15? The VAPI request will also give us the phone number and this is all information coming from the webhook. So make sure to just run this once to get all that information through and then you can just populate all these fields with the corresponding values. I've also created another variation of the sales department script, which if they just go ahead and say, I'm interested in buying something, we need to then offer uh, some of the products we offer. So I've just said, great, are you looking for an iPhone, iPad or laptop? And if they say they're looking for an iPad, then great, we've captured that information. Uh, but if they haven't said their name, we'll just ask them for their name and then we'll forward that call and then make this request with the function call, sending all this data off to make, to then send them that new call with the sales call populated with all their new values. Now, just below this, we've also got the technical department script as well as the dispute department script, which are once again, very similar, just being relevant to their actual departments. So in this case, it's saying, hi, thank you for calling Apple, uh, like that first one. Hi, my iPad has stopped charging recently. I'm not sure what to do. It'll just say, we're sorry to hear about that. Could I get your name? And then we'll forward your call. And then once again, the dispute department, my Apple Watch was meant to be delivered. It's not here. Uh, sorry to hear that. We'll then forward your call to our support department to get this sorted. So obviously these scripts are very short scripts, very simple to get set up, uh, but just making sure they're relevant to the particular department and then going ahead and running the relevant function uh, and it'll work quite easily. So just for this video, I've only set up the sales department here, but obviously the technical department and dispute department will be exactly the same. Just setting up the function, adding in the make.com URL, and then just setting up the automation to send a call uh, send a caller assistant that is actually relevant to them. Now, if I just scroll down a bit, you'll see a forwarding phone number option. And so VAPI actually has an integrated forwarding phone number system. And so simply put, all this allows us to do is just enter in our phone number and then in the prompt say, forward the phone number uh, if this occurs. And so obviously this is great and really simple to use rather than setting up our own make function, but we can only obviously set one of these at a time. Uh, so if we wanna have multiple forwarding phone numbers, we do just need to set up a couple of make automations to make that happen. Uh, but if you are looking for a little bit of an easier way to just do one forwarding phone number, you can just type in that number. This is probably a better use case for more of a human handoff system, where if somebody says that they'd like to speak with a human or it identifies that the customer seems a bit angry, we can go ahead and then trigger the forwarding call uh, to a particular number. And in this case, have the human now start that conversation. Just quickly, if you wanna see more AI voice caller videos just like this, 
let me know what you want to see in the comments below. So now jumping into the second inbound phone caller system, we've got a contact form where a customer or a lead can come through, type in their name, email address, phone number, as well as a message. And they're going to get called in five minutes from an AI phone caller. And it's going to help qualify them as a lead or even book an appointment if we want to. So this is going to be a super intelligent assistant that not only knows what its name is, but it's actually going to understand the message and the context of that message. So if I take the Apple sales caller, for example, if they typed they wanted an iPhone 15 in the message box, when they get called up, it's going to know obviously that they wanted to buy an iPhone 15 and really tailor that conversation to that. So for this particular example, I'm using Webflow for my form submission, but you could use any website provider or form provider that you use. And then all you gotta do is swap out the make block that I'm using. I'm just using a Webflow block that watches for any form submissions. You would simply just swap that out for whatever provider you have and then continue on the automation, which would be exactly the same. So if you are following along with Webflow, all you need to do is just chuck in a form block, add in some values for a name, email address, phone number, and message. And then we're going to use these values when a make request is made. So jumping into make.com right here, I've got a Webflow watch events, and this just watches for any form submissions that occur on the website. So in the case of my website, this form is called voice call. And so all I want to do is just ensure that we're getting the calls from the right form. So what I have is a filter on my make automation that just checks if the form is coming from the right one. I'm just saying if the name of the form is equal to voice call, which is my form name, then continue the automation. So once this automation has gone through, we've now populated all of the values from Webflow. And we're now moving on to a sleep tool. So in make.com, we're able to actually put in a sleep tool that simply just waits and delays the automation before continuing on to other steps. In this case, I've got it set to 15 seconds just for testing, but we could put this all the way up to 300 seconds, which is five minutes. And then that is gonna give us enough time to make it sound a bit more realistic uh, that the business has called them five minutes after they've gone ahead and submitted that contact form. So once the automation has waited for the sleep block, we're just moving on to another request block, which is exactly the same as the one before, where we're making the API call to Vapi to make a phone call and then send that phone call to the number that came through from the Webflow request. So all I've done is ran the Webflow request and this has allowed me to populate a bunch of fields here. And so what I've done is populated the name and the message within this prompt. And so just within the specifics part of my prompt, you can see here specifics, I've added in another thing that says, please refer to the customer's message when starting the conversation. And then I've done message column, and then I've got the message that came directly from Webflow. And so by doing this, we're able to give it a little bit more context as to what the conversation should be about. If it's gonna be a sales call, what are we actually selling? And if we already have that information like the iPhone 15, obviously we want that information to be there in the conversation to give it a little bit more context about what we're doing. And so once that is set up, we're simply able to go ahead and just fill out this contact form, hit the submit button and have the make automation run, sending a call to the particular phone number that was inputted in the form, calling us and then qualifying us, whatever we like. If you are looking for a custom system just like this, you can go ahead and book a call with my team using the calendar link in the description. We've helped several businesses integrate the solutions that you've seen here on the channel, and we'd be more than happy to help you out. If you found the video helpful, I'd greatly appreciate if you'd go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel, as well as comment below on anything else you'd like to see.